Hello, and welcome back to Amateur Philosophers Play Games. I'm Noah, your host, who will also be playing the game today. I'm Justin, I'm just the commenter today, I guess. And this is the show where we play video games and discuss philosophical ideas, problems, and philosophize about random topics. As a disclaimer, as always, neither of us are professionals, we're just two dudes on the internet who like talking about this stuff. So, Justin, new year, new life, uh, may maybe a little better than the previous year. Hopefully, that's what we're hoping for. Yeah. Well, I, it, nothing better to celebrate this new year than going back to another year. A, I, would, I wanted to say fictional year, but a, can a year be fictional? I don't know. That's not the topic of our <laughs> discussion today. A, uh, but a year in a famous work of fiction, the year 1984 specifically. Ah, uh, yes. I, you, you, uh, you've you been reading 1984 recently, I, right? I have. I have. And uh, just for personal uh, personal pleasure, but also because you know it's a, it's a good classic book, and also it's an enjoyable book. Uh, it, it's honestly... Quite, quite fun when you can get a book that has... Oh, come on. There we go. That has both. It's both enjoyable, but also it's a classic, so you feel smart for reading it. But that's not that's neither here nor there. The reason I was reading... As I was reading it, I was thinking some interesting stuff. So, you, many of you in the audience probably know the premise, but as a quick, brief rundown, in the far, far future of 1984, a tyrannical government controls everything. Uh, even... No, the party, it's called. The party controls everything. They control history. They control uh, society. No one can do anything without the party's will. Even thoughts, if they're detected by the sinister thought police, can be criminalized. Are you throwing and a dog? He quietly disappeared. Well, I, I threw him into the... See, I threw him into here, so he's alive now. So okay, okay, me. okay. Keep going, keep Look, going. Uh... The dog kisses you, you get another life. Okay. Anyway, 1984. So, it's a good dystopian sci-fi novel, perhaps one of... It's not the earliest, but the one that uh, put that genre on the map. The one everyone thinks of. If you want to say, oh, your government's being evil, you just say, oh, we're going all 1984. Big Brother is watching. Which Big Brother is watching. But to me, the interesting part is what was what makes it interesting and f almost frightening in a psychological way for me. Like, the whole surveillance state, uh, Big Brother is watching, the secret police, that's all frightening enough. But for me, I thought the most terrifying psychologically part is the idea that in this world the party claims to control all truth so whatever they say goes they claim the party claimed to have invented the atomic bomb obviously they didn't but they claimed it everyone says they're true everyone says that's the case and more frighteningly truth can be changed at the whim of a hat uh the main character in his internal monologue mentions that there's two other big countries in the world at one point, the party said, was at war with the at one of them, but they switched, and now they're at war with the other. But the party claims to have always been at war with the second one. It always has been, and any if you say wrong, that's not the case. So it got me thinking. Ba basically, what I'm trying to say is, party's greatest crime is... Oh, come on. Come on, climb. There we go. The party's greatest crime is the idea of the destruction of objective reality and the past. And that got me thinking. It is? See, that would only be a bad thing if there what objective reality really didn't exist. If there is no objective reality, then the destruction of the concept would probably be a good thing, right? We'd be getting closer to the truth. Right. But the idea that a, a group of people, powerful people, the rulers of the world, can... Wh whatever they say is truth. Uh, I mean, it doesn't sound good. Oh, I just got shot. I, I got or shot. Did I was you? talking against Big Brother. Did I? Big yeah. Brother says no. You weren't shot. It doesn't. It doesn't sound good, but we're we're, we're philosophers here. We shouldn't make assumptions for. Uh, we shouldn't make assumptions until we've at least thought about them, right? So, it, we should we assume that destruction of objective truth is a bad thing? Let's discuss. I, well, I don't know. Well, the the real question it's, before it's you can not answer, as obvious a question as you might think. So before okay, before, before you can answer that, you have to ask, answer, and like decide whether or not you believe is reality objective. And that's that's the question. Well, well, you're it's like, should it matter if objective reality is destroyed? Well, is it? <laughs> Look it, at the dog just hanging out on the rock. It's, Good point. Is reality objective? And the, like we talked about this previously a little bit with um, what was it? Uh, it was last. It was, yeah, it was the, where we talked about uh, social norms and whether or not like certain things like, exist and like. A lot of us like to think, right, you know, like, right. there are truths that exist in the world. For instance, 2 plus 2 will always be 4. 
Rad. Now and forever, Rad. two and two will always be four. Um, and that's just a, a, like a fact that exists. Um, or you maybe you'd say that like math isn't something that's real in nature. That it's just something that humans made up. So it's a it's a, like a social construct kind of. Which I mean, there's there's room to argue that. Um, but how about like asteroids existing or like like atoms? Like these things exist uh, I, beyond without human without human. We want to say these things are real. They exist. Like they're they're in the world. And the problem is, is that no matter what, everything that we experience is subjective. Right. So it's oh, it's kind of a it's a very frustrating feeling. We I had it a lot in epistemology when I was in uh, college, and because you keep wanting to have this feeling of like peeling back like your subjective like lens real quick to take a peek at reality to like see okay yes okay yes I really do have hands okay now I know that even though subjectively i'm like i could be mistaken it's like i know that it's it's secured um but we can't do right. that and there's so many times where and so a lot of people have argued that there is no objective reality or if there is it doesn't matter because it's un it's unattainable like you can't there would be no way for you to know that you like or to, there'd be no way for you to see objective reality you could only right. have your I, bias I, because any objective. anything you try to see it with is it, you, you're using your subjective senses. Exactly. So if you're trying to use a subjective to prove the objective, you, the problem starts all over again. Yeah, I, that, that's something I've thought about. Obviously, it comes up in this. And what makes it even more insidious, I think, in 1984, is the idea of a consensus. Everyone says, oh, it's true that... Uh, let me think of a lie that they use in the book. The chocolate. That's, oh, the, only oh, one oh, I did. Okay. that's the only one I remember. Is the uh, chocolate bar. Yeah. The chocolate bar. The, the, oh, the price okay, of chocolate. One. I, they, they said. Yeah, yeah. The price of chocolate. Uh, uh, yeah, it was the, the price of chocolate. Um, they said, for example, early on um, that the they were ne they were not going to reduce the amount of I think it was chocolate rations. Mm -hmm. But then later on, they came back and said, "Oh, look, we we always predicted we were going to reduce the amount of coffee rations." No, you're wrong. If you think otherwise, we're going to send you behind the barn with a shotgun. Yeah, you, you see what I mean. Yeah. So, <laughs> and and there is a, there is some kind of truth to that because. What happens in our world if one person claims that truth and the world is radically different than everyone else? We we usually call that person insane. Uh, let's see. Or or because... or or fascist dictator, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, like for example, if I said, "Oh, uh, actually, this world is a simulation run by the lizard people because they want to put frogs in the water and turn the the water," <laughs> I, I, I'm riffing off a. In, I'm, for our Do you know home, who you're ripping, ripping off a joke? <laughs> I think so. Uh, but the idea is if I make it too obscure, maybe YouTube won't, so uh. we won't get demonetized. Ha ha. But anyway, um, if I'm one person who says that and everyone else says otherwise, well, who am I to say that? I, I can say, no, I've got the objective truth, but we usually say that's a bad thing. Like the sign of, one of the signs of ins craziness is that you know you the think real truth. Everyone else is insane. You know the real truth, yeah. So, what what, what do we do? I I mean I agree, and I, like get, getting a little closer. If we're gonna make it a little more modern to like real day right now, it's a bit more. It, it's really thought to like people who say you know you're spreading misinformation. That's a really big thing, really hot topic right mm, now. That is a buzzword yeah, for, the, for yeah. the algorithm. Um, misinformation. Let's put. We should put that in the. <laughs> there we go. Get instantly taken down. <laughs> um, but no, it, it, it's um, that we're spreading, like, if you're spreading misinformation and then, like, you go back and forth with facts and, um, especially right now with everything going on with, like, COVID and everything, people say that a lot, that, like, oh, well, you, you know, we thought this and now we think this, and there's a lot of back and forth. And yeah, I feel like as a society, like, we're getting into that point where it's, like, you, we really don't think that there's an objective reality because you just start changing it. And if I can... I'm gonna be a little bold here. I'm gonna I'm gonna argue on the side of Big Brother, um, and say like, Ooh, okay. from a consequentialist point of view, so someone who only cares about the results, they're doing the best thing. If something bad happened in the past, and you have the power to just make people say, oh, that didn't happen, and then be in a better spot, the end result is good. Like, I mean, granted, Big Brother doesn't necessarily use it all the time for good, but I mean, if this wasn't so much a dystopian as much of a utopian society, like if it started out in the book as like a utopian society. 
I feel like people would be more accepting, like, oh, that sounds kind of okay, and it's more like a dark secret that's, like, revealed yeah. later. That would be, I feel like, a more compelling thing, because, like, we would fall in love with this utopian society of, oh, well, if something bad happens, like, you know, we just change history, make it not happen, and then nobody's upset about it. And now everyone's happy. Right. It, and we have a better result. Yeah, exactly. And it's not exactly utopian. Like, the narrator in 1984 is aware that everything is terrible all the time. But the, the vast majority of people who are around believe that society is amazing. The party is doing great things. The party and Big Brother are doing great things for the world. Life is getting better all the time, even though it's, by any objective measure, getting worse. But there's the thing again. Objective, objective measure. measure. Well... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We exactly. only have the objective measure because we're the reader reading so, it. We have, we are able to pull back mm, that reality. Ex exactly. We're, we're able to pull back that. Ooh, I can buy a slave. <laughs> Don't think too hard about that. Uh, that hey, 1984, 1984. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna quote you on that. <laughs> Please don't. Nope. It's gonna go in the chat. It's going in the chat. Oh no. Okay. Um. Anyway. Well. Anyway. Um, so we 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 as we? a reader we can we can, we get that third uh, yeah. third person perspective and we get to see reality of this world as it is unlike like but we're not able to do that for ourselves and like our reality. So right. my we can't pull back the curtain to our world. Right. My Just like the people in the book can't pull back the curtain and realize that they are in a book. Or if you can, you get shot with a shotgun. Or if you can. Well, <laughs> mm, yeah. So. Well, yeah, exactly. I, um, going furthering the, the consequential, consequentialist argument, if reality is, if like we only experience objective reality, then to the people in 1984 who's not the narrator, all the people who think society is great, they're living a happy free life. Like they're okay with it. Like they're, it's not, it's exactly. not like, it's not like this dystopian future is somewhere where people are miserable. They just don't know that they're miserable i guess you could say yeah exactly that's even a even a plot point brought up that oh if you have if you have oppression long enough the people don't have any measure of comparison so they think they're in paradise so, i mean again like I, so I arguably mean, I, guess, I guess that's not arguably that's true um a, a real life example i actually just saw a video on this uh north korea is now claiming that they invented burritos Burritos, people huh? people in North Korea believe that like the grandfather of the current leader made burritos. He made them in like I think it was actually 1984. Like or no <laughs> well, no no that's no, a... no no it was, it was 2005. It was 2005. Ah, uh, okay. because uh, that would have been too funny of a that would have been too funny. That would have but no it, yeah so he uh, yeah they they claim that he made burritos. So to the people in North Korea right now who are, you know enjoying their authentic North Korean burritos. They don't know any different, and they're completely content and happy with that because they don't have any outside perspective. They can't like look in, like like we are right now. Like we can't look at North Korea as an isolated thing, separate, and like like it's a different world. We can't. They can't pull back the curtain and see like, oh, that that's a lie, and but to them it doesn't matter. Right. And so the question, the con or I would argue, the consequence this would bad. be, if it doesn't matter to the people that are involved should it matter to anyone else yeah exactly or even where or it or even worse if no what if it doesn't matter to anyone or nobody knows about it does it exist right so does it matter I, th I think we're also steering into a little bit of um whether or not morality and ethics is objective uh, there are lots ah, the morality and ethics my old nemesis <laughs> um i feel like i feel like there are a few pools that philosophy usually ends up dipping into and i feel like our topics usually end up steering into is this le is this le ethical? Like, can we do this? Is this okay? Yeah. Um, can we and should we do this? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so, which are you know, it's interesting questions that we uh, we should ask or should we ask? Should we? Ask? Uh, oh no, we're, we're gonna. Should, now that's an interesting question. Should we study ethics? Should we study? Because the, the, ah. the question of should we is an ethical question to begin with. Uh, right. Well, I, I, the dog is dead. Dog, you killed the dog. Was that an ethical thing? No, I, it was an accident. There's always maybe. no, and they don't care. <laughs> Can't kill dogs. Yeah, that that would be an interesting question. Lying gets into a sort of self-referential paradox. Should you study ethics? Well, you need to use ethics to answer that question. But that's not what we're here today. Big Brother is watching us <laughs> and making sure that we stay on topic. Yes. Which we don't usually do. No, but I think that's the but, point. Uh, but I think, mm -hmm. I think there there is a, a something to be said here. It's going off of like, okay, 
Big Brother has the power to rewrite history basically and give it society what they believe is like the best thing. And I mean, arguably with the note with you know, obviously there are some exceptions, uh, like the like the narrator, but everyone seems to function in the society, everything seems to work well. Like it's not like the society is falling well, apart and they're lying about it. Like it's functioning. And the funny thing is, by again, because we're the readers, we can see that the society actually is falling apart. Things are getting worse all the time. Oh, I so see. The people in, in the society don't know. I forgot so, that part. So maybe yeah. maybe that does change. Yeah. Okay. So uh, But but that's that that just makes it even more interesting because anyone the, the few people who do recognize that society is actually bad and getting worse gets uh they, they get secretly they get killed by the thought police yeah. so if there's nobody left alive who thinks that way well i mean can i not get hit oh that wasn't what i wanted to do so i guess the question is as long as the society maintains like homeostasis and it's fine is it okay to keep lying and deceiving like reality yeah i uh, i suppose yeah uh, i mean it, it, in the book, it's portrayed as a bad thing, and I think most people would think it's a bad thing, but is it? We can't... Uh, the, one of these days, we're going to have our ultimate ethics discussion. It's going to be like a three-hour video. Yeah. Be good. But o only available on our Patreon. It, it generally... Only, <laughs> that'll, be the first, that'll be the first and only thing on the Patreon. Mm -hmm. Ah! Spider from above. Well, I'm dead now. Uh, what, was I, what was I saying about ethics? So, even more interestingly... Does even if there are even if ethically it's wrong, if nobody knows that it's wrong, is it still wrong? Right. If that makes any sense. Yes. So that's just asking like is is morality objective? So once again, going back to objective reality, are morals something like atoms that we like to think of exist outside of human like experience? Yeah, outside of human experience. Like if all humans were like I don't know, like if humans never uh, existed. Would there still be ethics? Would that be something that like existed? And it's hard to argue that there would be, unless you want to go into a, like a theological discussion about whether or not God exists and whether or not He commands the commandments because they are good, or the commandments are good because He commands them. But mm -hmm. if assuming humans didn't exist, it's hard to say like, oh yeah, no, ethics would exist. Morality would be a thing because like most of morality deals with human experience. Like we don't consider right. animals murderers, even though by literally every they standard, kill. they're murderers. Like, a jaguar is very clearly a murderer. Um, but we don't think of it like that, and, you know, there are some justifications. I, or shouldn't we? Yeah. Uh, shouldn't? Are, are, are you both. making ethical I, claims, sir? Oh, no! <laughs> oh, no. Ethics is too... Ah, there's a spider in the dark, ah! See, the spider I, is a murderer. I, I don't know about you, but I don't like dark levels in games. Ah. Especially not this game. I, I don't... Does, that, does anyone like dark levels? I mean, I'm, I, I suppose emo kids. Mm. Um, Should anyone like dark levels? Mm. Mm. But I... <sighs> what was I saying? So the... Whether or not morality exists, it, it's hard because most of morality deals with human experience and like murderers or like lying. We don't consider... There is an example. Coco the gorilla uh, was a was a gorilla who was trained to say over like 200 words in sign language or was able to sign over 200 words um and coco learned how to lie like i forgot the exact specifics but like coco would do something to one of the handlers or like you know coco would eat the leaves off of a plant and then lie about it because coco knew that they were getting in trouble if you know i think she i think she was getting in trouble if it turned out that she if they they knew that she ate them, so she would lie and be like, "No, I didn't eat them," and we don't consider that like morally wrong. I mean, do you do you consider like is is Coco the really gonna burn in no, hell for lying? No. I, <laughs> I don't think so. And I mean, this this gets into like another small topic. We spent one day on this in my uh, modern philosophy class. It's called Animal Day about whether or not animals have the idea of like have concepts whether or not they know what those are and whether or not they use them uh, so like does coco have the concept of morality like does coco know yeah. that she's lying and that lying is wrong because if she does then it's a lot harder to argue that she shouldn't be held like accountable most of us would say like or i feel like a lot of us would say that she's just ignorant 
and doesn't know that she's lying. Like she doesn't know what she's really doing. She just knows if I get in trouble or if they find this out, then like they'll, they'll punish me and I don't want to be punished. So it's more like she knows the chain of events, but she doesn't understand those chain of events are like linked together in a single concept called lying. And that that's wrong. Right. Kind of like a, or like a child, children like love to lie, even mm -hmm. though they can. Yes, just, like, yes. Um, even though uh, they're not very, they're young, so they're not good at yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you gotta get, you're easily found out. You gotta get good. Um, and we usually don't consider it, like, we, we tell children, like, oh, you know, lying is bad, and what you're doing right now is lying. And eventually they, they catch on and they start learning what lying is. But for the first few times, we are like, for the first few years of their life, we don't really, like, punish them because they lied. Like, if you, right. if you have, like, a one-year-old who, like, lies to you somehow or, like, deceives you about something, you don't, like, yell at them. You're like, you can't do that. And you just tell them because they don't have... Yeah. And so we don't consider them, like, morally they, they accountable. They don't have the capacity to do so. Right. Right. And so... Which, again, morally accountable back to back to the old ethics. Right. We, we, we really like ethics, don't ethics we? Ethics is a good... Ethics is a big... You know, it's a whole branch of philosophy about ethics. It's pretty good. Pretty big field. Um... It is. But so the question is, is like, so to those kids who are lying, like objectively, are they doing something like wrong? Does, does that, does that lying exist outside of the human experience? And it's like, well, it doesn't seem like it does. It seems like only when we introduce the concept to kids that, hey, lying is wrong, do they start getting the idea, okay, lying is wrong. And then they play along with the concept. It seems like if we were all like children, lying wouldn't exist. Like we wouldn't have, like, it wouldn't be a thing. If you right. if you want to go from yeah. a non theological argument, the, theologically, lying is wrong. That that, that the, because the, like the, yeah, theologically, I, I mean, it, there's debate even among uh, theologians. But I think the from what I understand, the most standard un object understanding of morality is that morality is sort of baked into the universe. Like in our in our world, lying is wrong from the beginning of time till the end of time. It doesn't. It's like it, lot, morality is as fundamental as the laws of nature, as the law of gravity. Right. Which, again, that's a very theological perspective, mostly because people say, oh, well, it's that way because God made it that way. Oh. Or, <laughs> or did God made it that or did, no, That's not okay. But that's you, a different you, topic. You, uh, <laughs> you, never answered, oh, no. you never answered that. That was a few weeks. You've had a few weeks to bake on that one. You're going to you're gonna have to answer that question eventually. Uh, for the viewers at home, this wasn't actually an episode. This was a, uh, at lunch we got after the episode, which it's a shame we weren't recording because it was good, a good conversation. Good content. Could have been, could have been Patreon conversation. Uh, we'll we'll revisit it like next year, next year. Yeah. When I don't have to think about it. <laughs> but <laughs> when, I, when I forgot, uh, next year when I've forgotten all about it the first time, so my reactions will seem genuine. Yeah. Um. Well, but either way, so the the like lying in this world is wrong because God somehow because God. Yes, lying as because well. God, and let's leave it at that for yeah, now. Yeah, so putting a pin in that, but like, yeah. So, I feel like from Christians, we would argue that no, there is an objective reality, and in a way, it's kind of like how we view 1984 as the book. Like we look down on the book, and we say, "Oh, we're outside. This book is contained in like this, this in these few pages, and like this is like a non-real reality, and only what's written in here right. is like objective to them." But I know, like, the real story, and they, they all have subjective perspective, but only within the book. And God, it's kind of like God is like that to, like, our world, where he's like, I know the real truth, I have reality here, you have, like... I, I've got the top-down view, I've read the whole book already. Yeah, yeah. But the people inside can't do that. Exactly, yeah. so, in a way, like, it makes sense, and then that gets into an argument of, well, okay, then does God have a reality, and it's his perspective objective, and everything like that, but... So I feel like as yeah. Christian, like for Christians at least, you kind of have to argue that there's an objective reality. But oh, one hundred percent. I feel like <laughs> yeah. I feel like defending it from a non-theological perspective is really tricky because you get into it's surprisingly tricky. Be yeah, yeah. It, that that that's the point I was getting at from because if you read 1984 from a non-theological perspective, well, who who's to say that? Uh, the past, it, the past isn't mutable. I mean, we don't think it is, but if, ever, but saying you don't think it is, and someone else saying I think it is, there's no argument there. That's just two opinion, or two clashing opinions, right? You know, actually, I, I think this is a good transition. That was the second part of the 1984 question, which we've sort of touched on already, but I want to focus more specifically on it. Is the past mutable or changeable? So Ooh. now I know what you're thinking. Well, the past, you know, you can't change the past. It, it's already happened, right? But 
Why does it matter? What, what, what does that mean? What, what, what does that mean exactly? So when we say the past, we usually, how do we know about the past? Well, we know about it from a combination of our memories. For example, I have a memory of uh, dying several times in this video already, plus records, uh, written records of people, say, for example, if I write down on, uh, on this day in 2022, Noah died in the video game, I put that in a, I put that piece of paper in a box and then come back to it a year later, I have, oh, okay, that's a link to the past. And then other things like, I don't know, architecture, for example, building, great buildings of the past. I, I remember when I went to, when I visited Rome a few years ago, I've seen uh, the Colosseum, that's a link to the past. Right. Well, so, so you, so, you, you, now, think, that, no, you that's think you went to Rome and you think you saw the Colosseum, which is linked to the exactly. past. Exactly. And I have, I have, I have photogra photographic evidence. So the... My point I'm getting at is in 1984, and let's assume for now, because if we don't, we're going to have get into all sorts of questions of does anything ever exist ever, <laughs> but let's assume for now records and memories and written things are accurate and we can trust them to an extent. We can effectively trust them. Oh, okay. Uh, I was going to bring up uh, someone online who recently in, or in the past few weeks has been denying that Rome existed, so that I was going to bring that up about how... <laughs> oh, boy. Um, well... <laughs> No, 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 okay, uh, there's a... Okay. You're gonna die if you don't... I, you, I think you're gonna drown. Uh, I'm at one life. No, I didn't mean to... Get the dog! You actually, funnily enough in this game, out of all the ways to die, you can't drown. Oh, well, you can get stabbed by spikes, though. And you're dead. And you took the dog with you. I don't know if I've told you, this game, it's called Spelunky, for those of you who want to walk, play out on camp. It's a fun game. It's it's really hard. It's it's a hard game. I've been, I've been playing it on and off for, like, a few years, and I've never beaten it. But anyway, yes. So, uh, so what I was saying is, uh, assuming we can trust our records and our memories and everything, in 1984, the government, Big Brother, goes to great lengths to erase all of that. They constantly rewrite newspapers and records, so there's no permanent records of the past. The, most of the buildings and old architecture and stuff has been destroyed in wars, and they can't quite control the memories of people, but people are brainwashed enough that they'll believe they'll they won't believe their memories they'll believe whatever the uh, big brother says right so and, and you know what let's take this more science fictiony than 1984 went because you know it's, a, it's actually a pretty old novel let's assume in 1984 two uh the big Googler. brother has discovered <laughs> uh, has discovered some kind of chemical or uh, hypnotism or what have you that can actually erase or rewrite people's memories uh, if, this is the thing you can actually meaning, do this this is real <laughs> yes you can do it I, I don't from what i understand it's kind of difficult and like memories are weird and will sometimes come back but let's assume in this uh thought experiment dystopian sci-fi novel this thought experiment the memory rewriting technique is perfect the suppressed memory or the rewritten memories never revert to their original form and you have no way of knowing whether or not your memories have been rewritten. Okay. So based on all that, there's no written records. There's no memories of the past. Uh, so uh, let me make an illustration. Uh, I have the experience of having played this video game and having died several times, right? Mm -hmm. But now uh, there, Big Brother steps in and rewrites my memory. So I remember never having played this game before. And then Big Brother goes into my computer history, deletes every trace that I've ever played the game before, uh, d erases all, or rewrites all the YouTube videos of me. I, I've played this game in one separate video before. Erases or rewrites all of those videos. And then everyone else who I've ever talked to about it also has their memories of me playing it erased. So did I ever play this game? So I, I there's a certain idea that I brought up in my capstone paper that I wrote uh, uh, for philosophy and it was uh, it dealt with the, something similar to this about how the, I are, I think I don't know if I, I'm not saying I coined this phrase but like I think I, I coined like this way of using it in a way there's a there's a practical use and then there's a Oh, I forgot, I forgot the word that I used to describe it. There's a practical and then there's an, oh, an objective. I think called it an objective. So objectively, we would say, yes, you played the game. However, effectively and practically, you didn't play it because there's no way, it has no effect on the real world. Like it has, like, right. even though it objectively happened, like, we, and, you know, pulling back the curtain and everything, objectively it happened. Practically, 
it has no effect on you or anything else that is even in this objective reality right now the like after the fact it right. has no there's no ripples like it, it like because all of, like traces of it have been gone there's there's nothing there um it's kind of like if a tree falls in the forest and no one's around to hear it, it doesn't yeah, make a it, sound it, it's it's a, essentially a more re wordy way of saying that old question yeah and so objectively we would say yeah of course it makes a sound but like subjectively it's like well or practically it's like well does it matter if it makes a sound if no one is around to hear it then it has no practical effect so should we even care does it matter it's kind of, I, right. I think i think uh was it freshman year i asked you about this um the whole simulation question are we in a simulation and you gave a pretty good answer you said that like if we are it doesn't matter yeah if we are i i, I think i remember this my answer which i would still pretty much give today i don't think i've changed my position on this if we it, if we have a way of saying despite all evidence to prove against there something is something is the case but we can never find any evidence for it and no argument can ever be leveled against it that's a worthless statement because you can't argue for it or to it and nothing your knowledge of it can't make any difference so i tend to be i, I tend to fall more on the what, what did you use the uh did you say practical or yeah practical well yeah i tend to fall more just as a practical person in general so my my stance on that would be well, if we live in a simulation, the simulation is so good that we can never find it out, and no argument can ever be made that we don't live in a simulation because you can just say the simulation is that good. So I say, well, then at that point, what what have you accomplished by saying we're in a simulation? And I would say nothing. So we can't we can't know about it, we can't disprove it, and we can't prove it. So there's no reason to worry about it. Right. So Noah's totally fine being a brain in a vat. I, you know, until I'm shown some evidence either for or I'm shown some evidence <laughs> for or against it that I can't, uh, I, I kind of trapped myself over here. Oops. What, wait, what'd you do? What? Where, oh. So see this uh, oh. spiky thing? Oh, okay. I'm blowing it up with okay. so I can get out. But it, the spiky things ought to kill you in one hit. So, yeah. And don't kill the dog. Okay. Um, mm, can't promise yes. That. So we should, like your position is that we shouldn't care about it. And I kind of agree. I mean, like, I I also did some reading with uh, Descartes and found I, out that we should I, care. I, I missed. Oh, no. I found out that we should yeah. care but... and that we do know. Or, or, what is it? We can figure, we can know if whether or not we're in a simulation, basically, and we should care. But, right. Um, so, yeah. well, it sounds like we're, it sounds like we're post on this, which is actually... Not something that happens too often. So let's let's open. Let's discuss this. I think this is it, this is an interesting thought because I say because we can't care, we should ignore it, and you say no, we shouldn't ignore it, even though it doesn't matter. We, we're both in agreement that it doesn't matter practically, but I'm of the opinion because we can't know the objective truth of this. To use your terminology, we should just ignore it. Whereas you, I I think you're arguing that we should not ignore it. and We should try to figure it out. Yes. In some way. Right. So okay, yeah, it's interesting. Okay, so, so 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 to explain this, I'll have to I'll have to give some background. Some background with Descartes. Um, so Descartes. Yeah, we we, should, we seem we seem to go back to Descartes a lot. I mean, I do like Descartes. He's he's one of my favorites. I, I like Descartes too. I, I don't think he got everything right, but he he's, he got a lot of cool. Yeah. Stuff. He did a lot of cool stuff. Um, actually, my business has changed recently after I did some more digging with Kant, but. Oh boy. I gotta love Kant. It's like, if Descartes is a nice, light, airy uh, eclair, Kant is like a brick yes. with, a <laughs> with uh, cake inside it. Um, so, De Descartes put out, you know, the famous thought experiment of the evil demon. Uh, basically, right. the brain in the vat scenario that you're just... The mind that is being subjected to, uh, like, hallucinations, basically, uh, by a demon, and that that's what your experience is. And he famously, like, at the end of, I think, Meditation 2, was like, well, great, now I know that nothing exists and that I'm just a plaything for a demon, and there's no way for me to get out of this. Um, I think in Meditation 3 or 4, he gets, or, or Meditation or meditation 3, he figures out that he exists. So I think it's Meditation 4 or 5. He comes to the, like, conclusion that he can find out that God exists. Like, he can know for a fact right. that God exists. So he knows that he exists and he knows that God exists. And there's an argument that because God is good, um, or th there's a struggle where, because he's like, well, if God is good, 
he wouldn't allow me to be deceived like this to such an extent. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, he... I, 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 I recall reading this as well. It's I, I wasn't too convinced about the whole the, the God part in this particular argument, but we'll, we'll go it, it's, it it, it's pretty weak as arguments for God go. It, it's, it's pretty weak. Um, well, actually, no, it, it's, it's okay. You know, greatest conceivable being all that, all that. Um, so it's okay. I, I think when I wrote a paper on it, I spruced it up a bit. I had I had to add a few steps, and do some logical, theological finagling, but you, you know, just... D D Descartes was real cool, but he, he wasn't ready yet for Justin. Like Justin was the one <laughs> exactly. <for Descartes. laughs> um, but anyway, so there's the struggle of okay, well, if God's good, he wouldn't let me be deceived like this. But he's like, well, I mean, my senses are still wrong for sure. Like assuming that like this isn't a simulation, you know, that I am here and that I can see like. Like ob as objective reality as I can, I like. There are times where like my senses fail me, like and I miss I miss see something or I miss hear something, and God allows me to be deceived in those moments because I truly believe that you know whatever I saw or whatever I heard is what like real. So he's like, there's no reason to where God would stop me at some point, and. I I forget exactly how he gets out of it. It's not it's not a very clean way of getting out of it <laughs> I, 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 I don't also don't remember how he gets out of it but i do remember it wasn't very impressive yeah i was not impressed with how it was not, it was not it was not notable enough to remember how he got out of it yeah um but i found a way i was like i was thinking about it and i went a little more biblical like based than he did and i was like okay yes god would allow us to be deceived and let's say this is like a a simulation or by an evil demon right that, that's all this is <clears throat> mm -hmm. i argued i said that okay well Assuming that sin is still a thing, you know, like everything and all of that, like all the things that we know about God, because I, I presumably there is an argument that God exists, and I I used some mixture of the ontological argument with the greatest conceivable being, like I, I mixed them together in a re weird way to get to okay, we can know that God exists, and from that I was like, okay, well then that means we still have sin, and that like the Bible says that like sin is something you can do even in your mind. And so I was like, well, okay, right. so then even if this is a simulation and this is an evil demon situation, we should still act as if it's not. But God could not allow us to just live with no way of getting out because that would be evil. Like allowing right. us to be continuously trapped and not being able to know that we're being lied to or figure it out somehow. It's kind of like playing Saw. Like you just lock this in a room. Like, and that is like unfair. I think is I think it's, what it's, yeah, like. it's it, not a just I, thing to I, do. Basically, you're, it's you're saying we didn't have a fair shot. Exactly. Like if I'm deceived, if I'm deceived about something, well, I had a chance to get it right. I just failed that particular test. Where, but if we're acting, it, if we're uh, going on the assumption that no possible evidence we can ever come up with can disprove the demon's existence, well, your your argument is that's not fair. God wouldn't allow that sort of unfair competition. Right. If that makes sense. So I think I said Which, that no matter how hard no, it might be. I... <laughs> yeah. I I, I I would need to think more about it, but for now, I think I can accept that. But I do want to point out something interesting to our audience. This is a very, a very, very biblical and even Christian, not, not Christian based of uh, solving this problem. This is so true. the reason I think we, you, oh, ah, ah, that was... That was almost really cool where I bounced off the frog and then landed without hitting, but I, I landed on some spikes, so that didn't go well. No. Are you sinking? The reason that's so, you're that's able... so graphic. You like sink down on the spikes. <laughs> like Yeah, yeah, you know. Just uh, don't don't die. Just don't Jeez. get hit, bro. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it. But the reason you're able to make it work is by bringing in God you have effectively pulled back the curtain, as we said. Like, because we've already established we can't have the uh, objective understanding of the world, but God can because he's outside of it. Right. You're saying, well, I'm going to borrow something God said and some evidence God gave me, which is going to allow you to pull back the curtain in this way. Which, it, it's, it's telling that you were only able to do this because you got God involved, effectively. So, yes. I don't know if that's... Uh, always true but i mean from my experience and from what i'm thinking about it it tends to usually work that way I, so I, I agree i think from what i've seen especially with the way i've heard like non or i've heard like atheists or non-religious people argue for like 
general philosoph- not even like specifically like philosophical like yeah, not even specifically ph- religious like our idea of oh is objective reality and the past fixed or is it changeable that's not particularly that's not a particularly religious concept it's more of a well philosophical concept yeah you knew that since we're on this youtube channel yeah i, I and i see people argue yeah. and i think that like i think i agree like i see them go through the paces basically like they look like uh first year philosophy students running through the paces and then they get stuck in a circle where it's like oh well nothing's mad nothing nothing's real exactly. it's all subjective um you know exactly and the reason you're able to get out of that circle is you have god who yanks you out and says okay here are some boundaries as the cosmic book or as the cosmic creator who the one outside i can tell you this uh well i have angered I, that that's very fitting uh, did you see the little message pop up i've angered kali the god no that, that about makes god. sense though <laughs> yeah yeah that, that does make sense um, but so I, I i'm not what certain that no argument exists or that it's impossible to deal with this problem without getting god involved but i haven't heard one but audience uh, in the comments if you know of something like this where you can somehow escape the idea of well everything could be fake and i can never prove it if you know of an argument or have an idea yourself on how to escape that without god or with god please let us know in the comments i would be fascinated to hear what our staggeringly large audience of about three thinks <laughs> on this very complicated topic i think i think the best argument i've heard is ba it's it's kind of like the practical argument I used um, before, and it deals with that and basically moral relativism, where it's like, right. it is objectively wrong, and it'd be like objectively wrong in the sense that it's practically wrong. Because in the real world, for instance, if it was socially, okay, like bringing it back to 1984, saying that Big Brother is lying isn't objectively as we see it outside, you know, pulling back the curtain. That's not wrong because it's true and they're telling the truth and they're trying to stop, you know, the you know misinformation the fake news if you will um and so we would be like oh no they're doing something that's right however the argument i've heard is that well relatively speaking because you know it's all subjective morally with more relative morally relatively it is wrong and it's not wrong because like there's some like bigger higher force you know like god that says it's wrong it's wrong because if you say mm -hmm. that you're gonna die so therefore it is wrong like the end result is ah, death. there's a lot of monsters, hero. Oh no! Ah, there's a lot of monsters. And so I think, okay, I think that's the best argument I've, or one of the best arguments I've heard is that basically moral relativism is true. You know, there is no real objective morality; it's just relative. But there is objective morality within that circle, within that relative circle. There is objectively a right and wrong thing to do, and it can be proven, usually with you know some right. form of punishment. And Yes, but, so then, which is interesting, because, uh, let's say, in 1984, again, it's part the, the, the way the story is written, and, uh, the way the narrator's inter internal monologue goes, the idea of Big Brother and the total, the, the totalitarianism is portrayed as a bad thing, but I could conceive of an alternate universe, 1984, where someone gross, uh, wrote a fan fiction, but grossly misunderstood the point of the book, <laughs> and wrote it where the uh totalitarian government hey you know this is a good thing uh freedom tr what what is the saying it's like uh freedom is sl slavery is freedom okay well so if somebody took the government's propaganda literally i could conceive of a world where someone wrote a novel where that is the case and it's portrayed as yeah being free and the government controlling everything is a good thing and we know so we it, have that called because, korea <laughs> right but again that's my that's my point where we're as americans or i i think our audience is mostly american but okay. as people who live outside it we can yet. say <laughs> we haven't which is a shame I, but whatever uh we can say that uh it's wrong in north korea the north korea thing is wrong but within the circle of that it is a good thing so as our christian with the god one we can say well because god is outside all of that he can say no this is objectively wrong and we can trust him mm -hmm. but if you don't have that pulling back the curtain outside reader it, it, it's you know well, we're coming back to more relativism it's relative right which which, it, which is a, so my point i'm getting at 
uh, to sum up all this very nuanced, complicated discussion in one quotable, easily taken out of context soundbite, without God, Big Brother is correct. Uh, yeah, that's, that, that's the way it seems. Um, I will say that this kind of argument does, um, is, is, if you argue it the wrong way, is very easily subject to um, one of like, philosophers' greatest things to call people out on. It, it's like instant serotonin boost. Um, it's a self-defeating argument. Ah, oh, yeah. Mm. But when you're a philosopher and you see someone make a self-defeating argument, it's, it's like, like oh, a chef it, it, it's been a good day. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Because the thing is, is that you're making an objective ah. claim that morality is subjective, basically, or relative. You're making an objective mm. claim about something that you're saying is subjective. You're saying that, oh no, more relativism exists. It's like, well... Well... You can't uh, say anything so Something exists. exists. Philosophers, <laughs> whole, uh, did somebody say something existed? I mean... Uh, I was trying to riff off a meme, but I couldn't see what meme <laughs> I was trying to do. So yeah, but that's, that's the point. I'm saying, as a Christian, I have the advantage of, well, I have a god who who is who does know everything and has pulled it back and has even told me in the form of the Bible and general revelation that um, something exists but that's my point I was getting at earlier without the God I don't I I haven't really heard a good argument on how you can get there without God's outside intervention again I'm not saying there isn't one but I I haven't heard one and I would be the ones I have heard tend to uh, they tend to go in circles either go in circles or assume like within them that something objectively exists which obviously or, or, if you're trying or, to prove something exists you can't assume that thing something exists or they end know? up an edgy teen nihilist you know town where it's like yeah, nothing exactly. matters i mean that that is that is another that is a alternate uh that is an all that is the conclusion they usually lead to in my experience nothing matters nothing is real in which case yeah big brother was right because he said he was and he had the armies and the police force to back it up yeah um yeah, I agree. I think that that's, that's usually where it ends up. And I will say on, on Nihilist, and this isn't a Nihilist episode, but we might be able to do this at some point. A lot of people get like mm -hmm. give Nihilist a bad a bad rap because they're like, oh, nothing matters. And it's usually seen as like a Kantian, like, well, Kant wasn't a Nihilist. He spent an entire book saying, I'm not a Nihilist. Um, but mm -hmm. that's just because he studied Nihilism. And he, like, a lot of people think like, oh, you know, you read Nietzsche and then you get all nihilistic and stuff and it's like well it's not necessarily you have to think of it as nothing matters so you should be sad because you know you'll never do anything beneficial there's also the side of well nothing matters so why are you upset yeah it's like it's all yeah, a joke exactly. like i i think i was about to make a joke you to basically turn your serious point into a joke uh, a lot of other people, non-nihilists say that nihilists are sad and don't make any sense nihilists don't care because it doesn't matter yeah basically yeah, there's a there's a uh, there's... that was not great. Yes, um, if you're ever sad and depressed, don't <laughs> read nihilism. But if you're ever happy, you might want to try reading nihilism. You know, give yourself a little lag. Oh yeah, it doesn't matter. It's all for nothing. Oh yeah, it's it's all for nothing. Um, but yeah, so well, I think yeah. I think we've covered it. We've covered a good, good bit of ground here. Yeah, I think we have. Um, we we've come back to more relativism and Descartes, who is a recurring character in the amateur philosophers play games grand lore yeah but we, we've come back to god and yeah 1984 uh if nothing else i will say i highly recommend at both for the historical value the value of oh so this is what a dystopian government could look like because george uh george orwell really put some thought into how this system would come about and how it could be enforced didn't he All think it was things, accurate just, didn't he think it was going to happen like relatively close to 1984 I, wasn't he like serious about it i mean there's it's very possible okay. but whether he was serious or not he whether he's serious or not you can tell by reading the book he very clearly put a lot of thought into how this would happen it, yeah, obviously it's the year 2022 it ha that hasn't happened yet or has, has it, it? <laughs> spooky music begins um but yeah we've covered 1984 i would say uh, in top of all of those endorsements it's just an enjoyable novel to read oh, it like, is. it's just fun so i will say we we i, I just realized we didn't answer the second part of your question too well so if we still have time oh no we we could, we could go a little bit uh, we could go a little bit 
Do we have time? You know what? Sure, sure. Right. Why not? I thought we were. I thought we were done. But, I thought so too, but this just uh, came out. We so. stared into the abyss a little bit too long, and it stared back, and it grabbed us and pulled us in. So, so here um, we are. The, is the past immutable? Is the past immutable? As it, and for those of us who, those of you in the audience who don't like big words, mutable to mutate. It's like the same word of mutate. It means change. So immutable means cannot be changed. So can the past be changed? And so we took it as a sense of like, really, it was a subjective like take because uh, that's what big brother does is he subjectively yeah. changes like our perception he subjectively of past. changes all the evidence and brainwashes people into not believing their memories or even right. changing their memories there is so, the fun fact there is the fun thought experiment of time travel though and argue whether or not you oh, actually no. can change the past whether or not the, the future can whether or not the present can affect the past um and i know that sounds really ridiculous um especially to our audience they're probably like what time travel that's not a thing um Mm -hmm. I actually spent an entire semester talking about time travel, basically. Actually, no, I guess it was only a few weeks. It was a good few weeks that we spent reading a book on time travel and philosophy. So it's a, it's a serious topic. I did not think I, that's what my uh, thousands of dollars of tuition would be going to, but that's what it went to. Um, yeah. I I will say, I think we should, we are running, we're, we're not low on time, but we've been going on for a while. I think we should probably ignore time travel for now because it is still in the realm of fiction. Mm -hmm. And so... Anything you can say, you can just say, well, in my fictional world, time travel can't change the past. Well, in my fictional world, time travel can. You know... I mean... It, 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 you can you, you can write stories however you want, which it's fun, no, do no doubt about it, but you can't use that as evidence for talking about what really exists. Well, you, oh, also, you what think about that. The time travel? <laughs> you think that. Oh, but that's... <laughs> oh okay. Oh, pro prove me wrong. Okay, no, ah! I, I wish I had the book with me. They, they actually do cite, like, the fictional versions of, of time travel to, like, make references well, to Well, I know, like, as, how... like, examples of what it could be like, mm. but not what it is like, if that no, makes sense. No, the, the way... The... We don't know the rules of actual time travel yet, I think. I mean, we know they have to be logically consistent, which is usually what you do is, like, you look at, like, the back to the future theory of time travel and you say okay why couldn't this work what's wrong with this like what's lo what's logically inconsistent and then you find the like the issue and there's a huge flaw in their in their time travel theory and i don't like it terminator does it pretty well but only on accident in my opinion like they accidentally yeah. fixed it and like made it fine but i think harry potter actually in the third book actually does it surprisingly well with the whole Basically, there is only one timeline, so anything <laughs> you try to go back... Basically, you can't change the past, but any you, if you try to change it, you've already changed it. That, if that makes sense? That's a, so, that is a fun... Um, that's a fun thought. It's like, that, that gets into... That gets back into... Term, uh, determinism. Was, can you... Can determinism. You, can, can you change... Can you... But was, I deter was I determined to die in that uh, very impressive way, or... No. So, I think... Um... But let, let's, let, let's set time travel aside for now, okay. because... Until somebody invents a time machine, or... Ooh, this is actually an interesting thought. If time travel to the past is possible, it has always been possible and always existed, because... So if in the year uh, 75, 75, someone invents a time machine, they can go back to the year 2022, so time travel exists now, even though it doesn't exist. Ah, paradoxes. Well, no, it would only exist if they went back to that time. It would only exist in that right, time. Right, but... But, um... So, like, right now, using, if, like... In, let's say the law of probabilities, as time go extends forward indefinitely, the probability that any one point in the past anyone will have ever time-traveled to increases as there's more time in the future to... I, we're not a time-travel <laughs> podcast or a YouTube channel, although maybe we should be. That would be fun. I mean, it is philosophy, just saying. I'm, I'm throwing it out there. It is. Um, but every, we've established everything is philosophy, so yes. that doesn't say much. Um, so I, but, I will say uh, that again, with, setting with aside time, time travel, travel. With time travel, it seems like you could change the past in some instances, in some way. Either you could change it, or you would basically be from a like a third person, you know, playing by the curtain. You would be changing the past, even if you did the version where you changed the past right. that only made the past what it already was. From a third person right. perspective. And you might not be able to detect that the, you might not be able to detect the change because presumably your memories would change along with exactly. the, the past would also change. So, so arguably yeah. no. Arguably no. The past is not immutable and history is a lie and we're, it's all fake and Big Brother is watching. <laughs> yeah. Rome didn't exist. Yeah. It was just, Rome it was, didn't it was just exist. a traveling circus. Yeah. Well, I, I, I do, and the, in our last few minutes here, the point I was trying to get at earlier when we got sidetracked a little bit was 
where is is the past stored? So like, is the past more? Well, I think I was trying to yeah, answer the question: Is the past more than just memories and records? Because mm. if it's more, if if, it, if the past is only memories and records, then presumably by changing those things, you could change the past. But if the past is something outside of memories and records and architecture and everything, then it would be harder to change the past without time travel. Oh, I, okay, so okay. Here, it, I've got something for you. I I don't, I don't I don't I don't think if you remember that you made this argument, but you made this argument. If there is a rock, oh boy! If there is a rock underground that experiences no change, does it have history? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You said no. You said no. There is no history. So, like, did, did I say that? You oh. did. You argued that there was no that the rock had no history. All you could say is the rock is there, and that is it. That's the only record you could keep because there was no outside change that would affect it. So that, that is interesting. <laughs> I don't. I'm not sure. I believe that now, but hey, let's let's roll with it because that's an interesting point. So yeah, uh, time is uh, change effectively. So if there is no change, one would assume there is no time. Now I know you can make the argument. Oh well, in the rock, uh, electrons are moving around, and uh, what 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 are, what are the other things that science people talk about happen in solids? I don't know. I don't know. There's guy. electrons and there's atoms and there's uh, ele protons. Well, let's say in the rock, even if it's not moving, even if the rock isn't moving, the electrons in the molecules are still moving. I mean, so there is something changing. Okay, fine. So the rock is the rock is at but I'm gonna say zero. We're, we're, yeah, exactly. <laughs> For the thought experiment, this is a thought experiment rock. It doesn't have electrons. Okay. <laughs> yes. So. So in this thought experiment rock, where there is no change, at all. That's not good. That that was also bad. Oh no! No, the dog died. That I might live. No. Look at him. No. I'm sorry, dog. Sorry, son. The dog is rabid. Had to put it down. Yeah, so in this uh, thought experiment rock where there is no change at all, well, hold on, um, distance equals rate over time. So let's, let's let's start out mathematically because I like to do that. Okay. You know the classic formula, distance equals rate over time. Yeah. So time equals the distance divided by rate. Well, in this case, the distance of everything is zero. The rock's not moving. The There's no electrons to be moving. So zero, oh, distance equals, ah, oh, shoot, D equals R. There is no rate. So yeah, <laughs> there is no rate. So the time of the rock is zero divided by zero, which is undefined. I don't remember if that's undefined or if it's zero, it, because you can make an argument for either. Oh, I've always heard it was undefined. Doesn't it make like an infinite, like upward slope or something like that? I don't know. It's been a while since math. Um, like, doesn't it? When you graph it, doesn't it like make that like it goes like start going up and it just goes up and like. I think maybe I, I'm not talking graphically. I mean, um, mathematically, like, yeah. can, can you usually anything divided by zero is undefined, but the argument I think to put it very broadly is, well, there, there's also a rule in math. Anything divided by itself is one. So is zero a thing? <laughs> is zero a thing? And if you divide it by itself, what do you get? What hap What happens? I feel like, so, I feel like that's a dumb I, thing because it's, Anything divided by itself, but zero is literally no thing. So I, I, that's my no, zero is a, that's, zero is that's a my thing. scapegoat is that you're dividing nothing by nothing, so you've got nothing to divide but by. But nothing is, but nothing is itself. So I, I, I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's a weird, it's a weird argument. I don't remember it very closely. Oh. Do you have a shotgun? Is this a shotgun? Do you just? Keep... It is. I bought the shotgun and the shotgun clear. I see. Okay. Don't shoot the dog. Up oh, too late, dogs. It's okay. I can't hold both the dog and the shotgun. So, just me, so you, one life, so you and shoot the, the, the dog. ghost of a dog. Okay. Anyway, um, math, the distance equal rate. So, the, um, so, so the rock is zero at this point. The rock is zero. What does that mean? Don't ask me. This is a thought experiment. Don't don't think too hard. Right. This is a thought experiment. So the idea is that, or you you argued that because all of that basically that the rock has no history. So what I would argue is that based on what you were saying yes history is nothing but your memories and your records and if you change all of that you have literally changed history by your own argument because all it is is a, is a matter of record and change there's not anything objective about the rock outside of it's like something that you could write down about it and all you could write down about the rock is that the rock is there and then right that's it tomorrow the rock is there 
the rock is there. I, I turned the wrong way and shot into the wall while the bat killed me. I should have shot the bat. Probably yeah, so that's, that, that, is, that is a argument. That, I think that is an argument you could make. I would want to, prob if I were to argue that further, which I don't know if I would, but I would probably want to sit down and formalize it a bit more. But yeah, I think you could make an argument because time is change. If something doesn't... It, my, my, that's uh, a little offside from can you change the past, but it's basically getting to the question of, well, where is the past stored? If that makes any sense, which I don't think it does. No. Okay, yeah, that's, there, there we go. Where is the past stored? Well, it's that's a nonsensical question. The only place it could be stored is in records or memories of some kind. So then if you can change that, you can change the past. There you go. I think maybe perhaps, I, I, well, I think we're right back to this, where it's like, when we try and say that the past is like, there objectively outside of us we're just doing that thing where we're pulling back the curtain and we're basically thinking of it as if we're god and we get to see like oh exactly. i know the yeah. dinosaurs were there because like i can pull back the curtain and i can see oh look dinosaurs right there mm -hmm. okay yeah because i mean we we don't we don't going back to the whole uh big brother thing well for all we know uh dinosaurs were never a thing that it was just some government conspiracy a few dozen years ago to bury some or to bury some cool looking rocks in the ground, call them fossils, and make up dinosaurs from there. Yeah, because the Earth is only 6,000 years old, so you know. <laughs> yeah, and uh, any the government was putting fossils in the rocks to reasons. I don't know. I, I don't know why conspiracy theorists <laughs> they have their, think the government because does of what them. they do. Because of them, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, can, can you. Uh, I, I guess it comes down to again, because as a Christian, I think we can say, oh, well. We have, we have an ultimate record keeper. You can say. We, have, we, have an, we have an ultimate record keeper who can't be changed, and because he also exists outside of time, and also because it, how are, how would you change God's memories? Up, oh, that was a bad idea. Changing God's memories, bad idea. Gets you impaled. <laughs> not even not even Goku could but do that. I, again, if you're trying to argue about it from a without God, uh, it, it, just, it comes down to I, I again we've come down to our circular reasoning of well. We have to know things. Ex we have to know that things exist in order to prove that things exist. Exactly. Eh. You know, I feel like so, this is like the third episode we've left on, where it's kind of like we're gonna be like, things might exist, things might not exist. Who knows? Th th yeah, <laughs> things might exist, things not exist, might not exist. I'm sure glad I believe in God who says that things exist. There we go. And whether or not this is a simulation, you should like, subscribe, and follow. Yeah. Yeah, because. Maybe the things that we call le the likes and the comments and the subscribes and the bell and the non-existent... Ooh, there's one. So we talk about... If we talk about the likes and the Patreon at once, well, the likes exist, but the Patreon doesn't. But we talk about it, so it does exist. I don't know. No, the Patreon doesn't okay. exist. Only the idea of the Patreon exists. No, no, Doc! No. Oh, the Doc almost ran into the... You know what? This is a uh, last minute. D are you going to kill the dog? Don't kill the dog! <laughs> I'll, I'll try killing myself and the dog at the same time gonna go out on a oh oh look at that you sink look at that that's so look you, you sink <laughs> that is pretty funny all right well i think that's Morbid enough for today we... for. no <laughs> uh yeah uh, th no it's not morbid the voices in my head tell me that i'm very sane and that i think this sh I, that i should think this is funny i thought it was we know should tell me i should <laughs> Yeah, well, that, that we we should go do this, and the voices in my head tell me I should go get a butcher's knife and make more funny things happen. <laughs> All right, on that <laughs> on that randomly morbid note, <laughs> that's not very funny, and also has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Thank you so much for watching. Like Justin said, please leave a like, leave a comment, drop a subscription, recommend this to all your friends and family. Just sleep on a long uh, road trip. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, per per this is perfect to put you to sleep on a long road trip. Exactly. And with that out of the way, uh. Uh, this that has been amateur philosophers play games. Bye. See ya.